Hey guys, it's Landon from RH. I'm going to give you guys a quick crash course on the user interface of Inkscape 1.3. I had a set of videos I did for Inkscape 1.3 and realized I just I didn't have a video that just kind of walked you through the user interface and kind of showed you where to start pushing buttons. So I wanted to fix that. I've got a new team member. Her name is Miriam. She's going to be coming on board and she'll need to learn Inkscape. So I wanted to do this video for her. I will let you know that uh, the Inkscape 1.4 beta version is out. I just downloaded it. I'm going to check that out. I'm excited. I don't think a whole bunch of this is going to change um, in Inkscape 1.4, but if, if there are significant changes, I'll try and remember to do it. Do another video. I will also let you know that I totally cheated for this video. So if you look on the Inkscape manual, there is a little diagram here that shows you what they call the different parts of the user interface. So I pulled that up so I made sure I got the names right. So when you open a new document in Inkscape, this is what you're going to see, something like this. It may look a little different. These toolbars may be in slightly different places. I also have the dark theme on, so there's a light theme and a dark theme. I like the dark theme. So let's go over the user interface. You've got your menu bar here. This toolbar right here is called the tools control bar, and that is context sensitive depending on the tool that you have active. So you can see as I click the different tools, the items in the toolbar change. So that's called the tools control bar. It allows you to control the behavior of the different tools. This is the toolbox over here on the left side, this toolbar here. So it's got all your, your commonly used tools. So you can draw rectangles, circles and arcs. Bezier curves and straight lines. We've got a freehand tool you can use. We're not going to go over the tools in detail. I have some other videos that talk a little bit about some of the tools. So that's your, your toolbox. Down below here we have the palette. So this allows you to scroll through different color schemes if you want. I have not monkeyed with this a lot, but I know I'm sure there are ways to load custom color schemes. I just, I haven't messed with that uh, very much, uh, but I need to, I need to check that out some more. Be cool to load like, you know, the RH color scheme or whatever color scheme is coming from the branding guide that you're using. So I'm sure there's a way to do that. I will, I'll have to do another video that shows how, maybe I'll try and link to one in the, in the description if I can find one. So that's your palette. So as you uh, draw shapes and you click on this, you can, you know, you can change the shape of the, change the color of the shape that you're drawing. This affects the fill, not the stroke, by the way. Okay, so that's the palette. This over here, this toolbar on the right side, they call that the commands bar. So you can open files, create new files, save files, import, export, undo, redo, uh, zoom to page, zoom to selection, send to the back. You can uh, clone, group, ungroup, and you do some more videos about that. So that's the, the command bar. We call that the command bar. I'm not sure if you can drag this. Uh, it'd be kind of cool if you could drag that. I don't see a way to drag it. By the way, not if you, it's more it's likely that all of your buttons aren't going to show that's what these little arrows are for so these are showing the things that aren't coming up here so this is the arrow button for this bar and then this is up here this is for your snap and control so these are your entity snaps or object snaps very important Whoop, sorry guys very important that's right here they pop up this just turns them on and off but it pops them up this is what they call the docking area and it's important, uh, some of the commands that you choose or the tools that you, you create will actually have a docking panel. So you can see this is the align and distribute. This is the text panel. This is the tra transformation panel. Uh, let's see, I, I, this is new. I don't know what this is. This must be an undo, looks like an undo redo tab. That's kind of cool. I've never seen that before, so learning something new. Pretty handy. It's your fill and stroke. Uh, these are your path effects. Uh, this is your export. So you can you can actually uh, you can find and replace. You can turn these off. 
but you're going to find as you access tools here. So for example, we can pull up the XML editor. No, that didn't dock. Sometimes when you pull up a tool, it will dock. Let's see, close panel, move tab to new window. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, okay, so we can pull them up here. Nope. I was hoping that would, uh, that would allow me to do that. So now I'm stumped. I've stumped myself. Oh, there we go. So now if I click an object, it's not pulling anything up. Let's see if I can get another one up here. There we go. So you can you can create. So these these panels just aren't made to dock over here, but most of these panels will dock over here in the in the dock, what they call the docking area. So that's the the basic user interface. They've got these rulers here. You can see you can pull guides out. And then uh, delete them. I, I'll be honest, I don't use the rulers very much. Uh, now I'm trying to remember how you get rid of these stinking things. Just take them back in. So I don't use the rulers much, but they're there. Uh, Looks like you can lock those. You can lock the guides or unlock them. So again, I don't use the rulers much. We've got some different display modes here. I'll be honest, I haven't messed with those. It looks like they've got an outline mode. I haven't done very much with that. But that's the basic overview of the user interface in Inkscape 3. Make sure you check out my other videos on Inkscape 3 on the RH Learning channel. And you can learn how to use some of these basic tools. Uh, hopefully that gives you guys an idea of what you're looking at when you first open Inkscape. It can be a little overwhelming, especially if you're not used to working in, a, in any kind of graphic design program. But Inkscape is top-notch, best of the best. It's one of the main tools we use here at RH. So I hope this uh, introduction will help Miriam a little bit as she gets started with the program. And thank you guys for watching.